Hi, this is JC Magsalin and this video is actually aimed towards beginning orchestration students and how they prepare the scores when submitting their homeworks. I've been teaching beginning and advanced orchestration classes for almost 10 years now. And these are the most common score preparation errors I see when students submit their homeworks, especially within the first few weeks of the course. The goal of this video is to compile all of those errors and hopefully have the student use this video as a sort of a checklist before they submit their works for the week. The first one is actually very understandable, especially with beginning orchestration students. So students should observe proper score order. So for students who are not familiar with the score order, so you have woodwinds first on the top part. Next is brasses. And then percussion and then keyboard instruments uh, along with the harp. And finally, the strings at the very bottom. Okay, so for most notation softwares, there would be an option there to automatically arrange the instruments in standard orchestral order. So in the case of Dorico, they recently added this feature where you could automatically arrange the instruments in orchestral or band order. In some notation softwares that are doing the score order automatically, the bar lines are already set to cross orchestral families. But in some cases, I still receive homeworks that do not follow the rules regarding bar lines. So just remember that the bar lines should cross instrument families and break in between different instrument families. So for example, you have the woodwind families at the very top. Now if you notice, the leftmost bar line is continuous from top to bottom. But now if you look at the woodwind family, the bar lines are continuous from the flute down to the bassoons. But break when you get to the brasses. So you have that space between the woodwinds and the brasses, which is very visual to the conductor. It easily shows the different orchestral families at a glance. So if you can see here after the woodwinds, you'll see that the bar line starts again from the horns down to the tuba. Another thing to consider here is the brackets. The brackets again shows the orchestral family. So you have the main brackets and then you have sub brackets. Now those sub brackets uh, group together staves that have the same instruments. Uh, for example, here with the horns, you have two staves that contain horn in F. So you have to put a sub bracket there. Again, these uh, small details are automatic in some notation softwares, but in uh, in others, which I'm not sure what students use, uh, I do encounter missing sub brackets. Next would be the use of player markings. Uh, this would be A2, 1 point, and 2 point. In some cases, you also use 3 point or A3. Usually, you'll see this in staves that have more than one woodwind or brass instrument. When condensing your scores, do not forget to use these markings as it would indicate which player would play uh, a single musical line. So for this example, let's use this uh, bassoon 1 and 2 staff. So bassoon 1 and 2 here uh, is given a single line of music. No polyphony, no additional harmony. So you have to indicate which player will play it or are they going to be playing it 
at the same time. So A2 would be saying both players play at the same time. Or if you want, you can have only player one. So you could use one point or player two only. Uh, so mark it as two point. Let's check out uh, the clarinets now. So clarinets one and two are placed in a single staff. Now you have uh, lines that are harmonized. So that's no problem there because player one will be playing the top, the top note and player two will be playing the bottom note. Now the, the problem arises when you have a single line of music. In this case, uh, we put the marking one point to indicate player one would be playing the single line. Now for Dorico, uh, Dorico condenses the music automatically and automatically places a rest when the instrument is condensed within the same staff system. Now for strings, since they are a subsection, meaning violin one pertains to 14 players of violin one subsection, or same with the violin two, there are multiple players, viola section would be multiple players. We do not use A2, one point or two point. Instead, use DVC. DVC means you divide the section uh, into two usually, but sometimes uh, more than that. If you have multiple notes that are intended to be played as double stops or triple stops, make sure to indicate it as non-div or non-DVC. Uh, else, mark as DVC. Now in the cello section here, you also have a DVC marking, which means the top note is played by half of the cello section and the bottom note is played by the other half. So if ever you would find the need to do three notes at the same time for a section and then do a DVC, mark it as div A3. Or in some cases, uh, it depends again if you need more divisions than that. But if readability and clarity is sacrificed, it's better to write the music in separate staves. Another common error I see within the first few weeks of orchest beginning orchestration class with uh, student submissions is they leave the chord symbols on orchestral instruments. So do not put chord symbols on orchestral instruments unless you want them to improvise over the chord progression. Now, if ever your music requires uh, an orchestral instrument to improvise, you can use slash notation and then you could put a chord on top and maybe an additional marking for improvisation. So for example here, maybe you would want flute one to improvise on bar three over a G major chord. So you put slashes in the chord symbol and maybe a marking that says improvise. Initial markings such as tempo and dynamics are sometimes overlooked. So here, tempo markings should appear at the beginning of the music and then dynamic markings should appear at the start where an instrument would play. So these initial markings would give musicians important information on the tempo and how loud they would play a certain uh, passage. So this is probably one of the most common errors I see with student submissions. Proper beat grouping should be followed accordingly and with relation to the time signature. So when done properly, it actually facilitates faster sight reading for musicians. Uh, if we refer to Elaine Gould's Behind Bars, which is a guide to music notation, there's a section there pertaining to beaming according to the, the meter of the music. And it also states there that if in doubt and for utmost clarity, beam together only the notes of a single beat. Now for our example here, uh, it is very hard to identify the beats within the measure because of the wrong beat groupings. Now this is acceptable in some cases wherein you're showing the 16th note syncopation. But for beginners, we'll try to show clearly each beat within the measure. Now rewriting this wherein you show the beat groupings reflecting the beats within the measure 
you get this. Notice now, you can clearly see the beats within the measure and the 16th note syncopation that crosses a beat is written as a tied 16th note. In this example, too many unconsolidated rests can also be confusing to sight read as it presents too much unnecessary information within the measure. It's much easier to read a large rhythm value and place a staccato marking on it than see a lot of rests. Notice now, the notes and rests reflect again the beats within the measure without too much unnecessary rests presented. Okay, so the next one is sizing the music properly to fit the paper. Sometimes students leave out a lot of white spaces on the page. Uh, this means that the staff system size is too small. Now, during online classes, students submit their assignments in PDF format, so it's easier to zoom in and out. But if you get to print it out on an A3 sheet of paper, it's hard to read. So in this case, you might want to play around with the size of the staff system, making sure that everything is clear and it fits the whole page of the paper without overlaps or collisions of items. Now, on the other hand, if the music is too big, you might have problems with collisions of items, such as notes colliding with markings, uh, markings colliding with staff systems, etc. So you have to look for that staff system size wherein it's very readable, it's clear, it's big enough, but not too big wherein the items are colliding with each other. And lastly, if you're using a C score or a concert pitch score, octave transposing instruments must be in their transposed pitch. I require my students to submit concert pitch scores so they could easily check their harmonies. I commonly see this issue with the double basses. So for example, here in measure 18, the cello and double bass are essentially playing the same notated pitch, but we have to remember that the double bass is an octave transposing instrument which sounds an octave lower than written. So sometimes I get submissions looking something like this in which case I automatically mark it as wrong because it's out of range of the instrument even if it's using a 5-string double bass. So in the case of Dorico, it automatically transposes octave transposing instruments even if you're using a concert pitch score. So in other notation software, you have to remember to transpose the double basses and other octave transposing instruments in their written pitch. Another example would be the piccolo flute. Here, the piccolo is playing an octave higher, but it's notated in its written pitch. So sometimes I see student submissions having the piccolo in their sounding pitch. So my general reminder is if you're using a notation software that doesn't do it automatically, always remember that octave transposing instruments in a concert pitch score are written in their transposed pitch. Okay, so that's it for the video. I hope this helps beginning orchestration students and maybe use it as a checklist before turning in orchestration homeworks and assignments.